about the lies of the devil. The lies of the devil, we looked into the life of Jacob. As Jacob was presented with the court of his favorite son, Joseph. And Joseph, many times, as I explained last week, our assumption that it was Joseph's brother told Jacob that it was a wild animal, uh, uh, devoured him and took him, uh, left, uh, take his life from this earth. And that is what most of the time our assumption was. But the brothers only presented the coat. But Jacob was the one who came to the conclusion that, oh, this is how it is. And it was a wild animal, devoured him, and I will not see him again. And we looked into the after effect of how the resentment, how the grief that he had towards Christ, God led him through. And he did not offer a sacrifice for the long 11 chapters in the book of Genesis that we see. And also we saw that the day, the very day that when he heard that Joseph is alive, he offered a sacrifice to God and God spoke to him on the very night through visions which the Lord that same Lord who spoke to him many years back on his way that he was running on his way to his uncle's house Laban's house so that is what we meditated on last week today also we will continue with the thought and we will see how powerful the devil's lies are how much of an impact a lies can make in our lives and if we have to be vigilant we have to how much suffer for the for the for the uh, lies that devil is talking to us if we give our ears to the lies of devil we know devil is always a liar always a liar by creating circumstances bringing scenarios into our life bringing circumstances and uh, all the other things that is going on around the world devil will not tell you what you should say they will give you all the environment all the atmosphere so that you can make up your mind to come to a conclusion. You know why it is powerful? When you speak something to yourself, you believe it 100%, okay? You believe it 100% that if I do this, or if I am able to do this, and I said, I will conquer this, I will overcome this. It is my confidence in myself. It is my confidence in my ability. It is my confidence in my God-given skills. And that is the reason devil will use scenarios. Devil will use atmospheres. Devil will use environment so that you speak negativity to yourself. In any of the incident that we study in detail, most of the time, men came to the conclusion. People came to the conclusion. It wasn't the devil brought the conclusion on them. Devil brought the scenario and you made a verdict on yourself. That means you will never come out of your own conclusion. You will always be a slave to your understanding. You will always be a slave to your understanding and knowledge and you do not have the power to overthrow what you have written deep in your heart. Here, devil is bringing another lies in the life of Job. We know in the first scenario, Jacob, devil used the, the his own sons, his own children, for that Jacob came to a conclusion. In the book of Job, we see this. Let us go through this. God, Job is a very pious man, very religious man, very godly man, commended by God himself and Satan himself. He is well testified in the land. Such a great man who had much influence among the youth, among the older ones, and if he sit in the entrance of the city, young men will tremble they will stand in reverence. They will get away from him because of the respect. Such a great influential personality. One day, devil came into the presence and said, It is not, it is not for, it is for nothing. Is it for nothing that the job is serving you so faithfully? 
touch everything he has and he will curse to your face. Okay, come with me. He will curse to your face. And God allowed, okay, God allowed. God allowed and devil did what he could. And every, every one of his wealth in those days, if you understand, the number of animals will determine how rich you are. Okay, that was that is how it was. It wasn't the money or dollars or gold or anything. How much of an animal wealth you have, you are that much rich. So Abe, Job had 7,000, Job had another 3,000, Job had another 100. Hundred thousand, job had another five hundred. A wealthy man in the land of Uz, a land of Uz. Such a great man who had many servants. Job lost everything one by one, one by one. Look at the scenario. One of his servants came to him and said, "Fire of God fell from heaven. Come with me. Fire of God fell from heaven and destroyed." Every Everything you had. They were thin the tea. Aga shutun in the weena. Nina kula dine yellam nashi pitchu alanya. They were thin the tea. Okay. Is it the fire from the Lord? Was that the fire from the Lord came down on Job's, Job's wealth? Was that the punishment from the Lord came down on Job's children? It was sin. The devil wanted to prove to God. God allowed it to happen, but Devil brought it on job. Devil brought it on job. But the servant came and said the very words. The fire of God fell down from heaven. Fire of God. Let me tell you, in the first scenario, we, you, we see that the, the very own family was used by devil. In the second scenario, we see that devil is using atmosphere. Devil is using circumstances. Devil is using his servants. The, where did the servant get this idea? The devil wanted to prove to God that Job ill curse God to his face when he go through challenges. That was that's what the devil want. Devil wants to prove to God that Job is not serving God faithfully because all the resources that he had is protected by God. But devil send the fire down, and the servant came and said, "The fire of God fell down from heaven." Let me tell you this morning, when circumstances is used by devil to speak lies to you, circumstances is used by devil to speak all the false allegations about you. Let me tell you, you know who you trust, you know who you worship, you know who you belong to, you know who you serving this morning. My God is not a dead God. My God is a God who is alive and he is on the throne. Hallelujah! God is on the throne. My God is on the throne. Hallelujah! Job, after all these incidents, okay, that is where we are coming this morning. After all these incidents, it says, while he was speaking, the other servant came and lined behind him. After he is delivering the bad news, the other servant came right behind him. While they were speaking, one by one, one by one, all these bad news are being delivered to Job. At the end, one servant came and said, all your children were at your elder son's house. They were celebrating. A wind came and hit the house and all your children has been left this world. A father who lost all the ten children. A rich man, a wealthy man, lost all his wealth. A influential man lost all the efforts, all the power in the society. When he heard this news, this is what we read, he knelt down and worship the Lord. Let me tell you this morning, our spirituality is not based on what we have from the Lord. Our spirituality is not based on how the much the Lord blesses us this morning. Our spirituality is based on how much the Lord loves us this morning. Glory to 
God. He knelt down and worshipped God. Moving on. They will run back to the presence of God and say, That man is still religious. He is so faithful. He did not curse God. He did not murmur God. He didn't do anything sinful in nature. He is very faithful and very religious to God. And God says, devil proposed again. Touch his life. Man will curse. Life for life. Skin for skin. Eye for eye. If you touch his body, he will definitely curse you. He will definitely curse you. And God allowed it, okay? A man who had boils, severe boils, from the sole of his feet, all the way to the crown of his head, sitting in ashes, taking a piece of pottery, scratching down his head, well, head to toe, all the way, all of his body. As he is scratching, dead skins are falling down from his body. And even his wife, even his wife came and said, Are you still holding on to your faith? Aren't you enough by the law? Why what the Lord had given you? They went another than His wife asked him this question, and Job said, You talk like a foolish woman. Conviction of job, okay? Listen, he said, we have received good things from the Lord. We ought to receive bad things from the Lord also. That is what I said earlier. Our spirituality, our worship, our attitude in the presence of God, our relationship with God, it is not dictated by what the Lord has given to us. It is not dictated by what the Lord has blessed us with. It is dictated by the strong and perfect relationship we have with our Christ the morning. Hallelujah! Our Christ in Lord! Our Christ, our trust in our God is the man, is the, is the, is, yeah, that is what determines our relationship with God. Okay, this man, he was faithful. Three qualities of Job, that's what I wanted to say and we will conclude this morning. Number one, Job for Job, everything he had all the asset he had, if you wanted to take a nutshell of it, all his assets were completely relied on God. Yobinde agapade orla swatta devam matram ayirundu. Devam matram ayirundu. Adu vanda Yobinu parayan pattiye. Let my cattle lost. Let my donkeys lost. Let my camels lost. Let my oxen lost. Let my servants lost. Let all the things of this world fail and lost. I will not fear. I will not worry. I do not care about anything of this world. I do not worry about anything of this world. All I care about is what I have with me this morning. I have my God with me this morning. In the Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Number one quality of job. God is everything. God is everything. Okay. If we were in Job's position, will we be able to? Offer one stotram. Patu makalu vay. Kato. Okay. One stotram parayo amala. Will we be able to say, Thank you Jesus at least once. Lost ten children at once. Once. Okay. Ten dead bodies are lined up one by one. Okay. All these ten children which he offered sacrifices. Perhaps if they might have sinned. Because of that thought, he even offered sacrifices on behalf of them. All the wealth was lost. From head to toe, I, he was afflicted with boils. Okay, I am imagining in my thought process here, Job is sitting before the dead body of all these ten children, scratching down his body as the dead skins were falling down from his body. Job was saying, thank you God, thank you God, thank you God. Will we say one thank you? Will we pray? Will we at least be in the presence of God? He would have gone long ago. Long ago, 
would say, I don't need this God. No, enough. Enough is enough. I don't need this God. I don't worry about this God. I don't need a God who do injustice to me. Even when I was faithful, we wouldn't do any of these things. Look at this man. After he heard all his ten children, God, in English, Malayalatil angan lalai dek, in English, in English, Kavinnu veenu gadu naradichunna, Kavinnu veenu gadu na. Stotram, let me tell you, this is what our attitude should be. Everything must be our God. In Psalms, we read this verse, Oh God, you are my God. You, apart from you, I have no good things. They are me and the day of Magno. Me or again, he couldn't none may you mila. Hallelujah. Me or again, he couldn't none may you mila. Apart from you, I have no good things. Hallelujah. Let my health be in the worst state. Let me lose all the wealth that I have. Regardless of what I go through, I know I have my God with me. I know what. What I have, I know what I have. I have this God with me, and I will not be shaken. I was meditating this morning, the same passage over and over again, and the Spirit of God told me this very clearly. We need this commitment this morning. Okay, many of us serve God because God gives us everything we ask. Okay, we get a good job, we get a good house, we have good children, we have good health. Everything that we ask for, it is lined up one by one, and we think we have reasons to praise God. And the Spirit of God broke me at that moment. They want my when they have to do that shit and do that. Yeah, you don't know what that is. Yeah, you. Think about those people who don't have anything. They do not have a good house. They do not have a good car. They do not have a good money. They do not have good money. They have nothing, but they still worship me. You think you are more blessed because you have some dollars in your hand? You think you are blessed because you live in a good good house that you can buy or afford? No, no, no. God was saying, "Let me be everything to you." Nyan na kalla mai tirate, jivam banana bakanda vandalum, jivam banana bakanda vandalum. Even if I have to lose my life, if I have to put my life on the line, oh, shandara dara dara, ritara ragal kara damana ramdare. Hallelujah. For him. God was everything. God was everything. Shall we examine ourselves this morning? Do we serve God just for material blessings, or do we really mean that relationship? Do we mean that relationship? Do you, or am I? Let me ask myself: Am I ready to die? Am I ready to put my life on the line? Am I ready to suffer for God? Let me tell you this morning. This is the commitment we need. We do not know what tomorrow holds, but this is the other message that came to my mind. God is about to test people. God is about to test people. Be prayerful. Be vigilant. Be watchful. Prove your faith in God. Prove your trust in God. Times will not be easy as we move forward. I do not know why it came to me. It came back to me a couple times. God is going to test people. I don't know if it is me or not. Am I ready? Am I ready to prove it in my life? For Job, God was everything. God was everything. He said, "God has given, and God has taken." Let His name be glorified this morning. Shall we say to the Lord this morning, "Beyond everything I possess, beyond everything I earn, beyond all the health that I have, all my stock and all the finances that I secure, Lord, I value You this morning. You are the one that matters to me. You matters to me the most, and I am ready to give what it takes to prove that I serve You." With their whole heart this morning, Hallelujah, Hallelujah! For Job, everything was God Himself, God Himself. One of the words that Job said shook me literally, Hallelujah! After everything that he lost, Hallelujah! 
Job was saying in Job chapter number 13, verse 15. Allah boy, everything is lost. Only life left. Only life left. He is just breathing. Okay? He is became a skeleton. Asti Udamai. Tokilade. Mamsamilade. Just became a piece of skeleton. Sitting in the corner of his house. Sitting in ashes on sackcloth. Scratching down his body. Everything is gone. And Job is saying, even if he slays me. Even if he slays me. Avan enne konnalum. Parayuwa. Parayim. Avan enne konnalum. Nyan avan aittu kathirikim. Even if he slays me, I will wait for my God. I will prove my walk before him. And the power the Mumbil Nantalikim. Hallelujah. And the Nada Power the Mumbil Nantalikim. Even if he slays me, I will wait for my Lord. Second reason, second quality in the life of Job. Job did not believe the lies of the devil, okay? Job did not believe it. But Job had to pay a high price. Job had to pay a high price. All the things are lost. Everything is gone. His wealth and all that he accumulated is gone. Now, Job is going through a phase of disfiguration. Disfiguration. Viruba makapata. Or avasta iluda yubu bhogya. Viruba makapata. Stotram. All his good health is gone. Such a rich man who ate good all the time. Okay? He got lots of servants who will cook anything he demands instantly for him. And all, in, if you read the chapters in 30s, 23 and all that, Job is pouring out his heart and saying, even my servants at this moment, I call for my servant. They disregard me. I call for my children. They do not hear my call. Even to my wife, my breath is an abomination. And the body is and the swasam is a he went through a phase of disfiguration. Oh, Ramana. He went through a phase of disfiguration. A born, a, a group of bones sitting in the corner of a house. Job went through this phase because he did not believe what the devil says to him. Job says with his own words, later down the chapters, he says, I will see him with my own eyes. Anyan Allah sonda kanale, nyana vane kanum. Hallelujah! I do not care if my skin decay this way. Yenda thwakking and nashicha, nyana onna villa dai tiralum. I know my Redeemer lives, and He will stand on the dust one day. Our Lord will put him in the cup. Nyana vane kanum with my own very eyes. Ribana, Sandara, the Radana, Ricalaba, Sandare. Went through a phase of disfiguration. Let me tell you this morning, we will go through this phase at times in our life. Kato, Mano Herama, Lata Ruban, the Makala, and Dau, Praya Agumbum. When we get old, either we get sick, where either we are in a hospital bed. We will be in a figure that no one desires us anymore. No one wants to see us anymore. Let me tell you, our commitment even at that point would be, Oh, I will see my Redeemer. I know he lives. I know he lives. And I will see him with my own eyes. I will be with him with my own presence. Hallelujah. Second quality of Job. He went through a season of disfiguration and he proved to God that he is fit to be with God. Number three, Job went through a season of accusation. Accusation, okay? We all will take some accusation to some extent. We will slide it. We did not really care it, right? How about if someone accuse your children 
right to your face will you sit idle nammada makkale kurichi nammada mogathu nokki tabavada marana nammal undayiriyo will we keep silent ningal onnu marubadi parne come on no we will respond we will respond but this man this man his friends came to comfort him one of his friend looked at his face and said oh i want you to display that verse up here sister gidu job chapter number 8 verse 4 one of his friend came to comfort him he said your children must have sinned against him so their punishment was well deserved no sahikyo or appan sahikyo or amma sahikyo will a father be able to bear it will a mother be able to bear it a friend who came to comfort him he says they deserve it because they have sinned against god they have sinned against god and job is saying one thing oh my friend you do not know something i am a father i was a leader in my house i was offering sacrifices every single time possible with the thought driven in my mind perhaps if my children have sinned against you tetti poyengilo ennu vechu anganeyulla chinda kaaranam yaagam kalichu or appana naan stotram i know my children did not sin against god i know my children did not fall short of the glory i was a father interceded for them i was a father get stand in the gap for them i was a father lift them up in god's presence every day and job is saying oh his own words again proves his faith in the sachi uyarathila my testimony the person who vindicates me the person who commends me he is up above he knows what i am doing he has seen my tears dear father dear mother let me tell you a word of encouragement this morning you and i have to be very vigilant we do not know what all the areas of our children are traveling through but this is a perfect example perhaps perhaps tetti poittundengilo ennu vechitte avarku vendi idil nilkan avarku vendi kareyan will you cry for them will you intercede for them will you lift them up in god's presence will you stand in gap for them hallelujah perhaps if they have sinned against god hallelujah qualities of job let me wind up my words time worship team come forward let us make a commitment this morning god i do not care what happened in my life i do not care what i lose as far as the worldly possessions all i care is all that matters is i have you as my possession i have you as my asset shall we stand in god's presence this morning shall we come to a commitment this morning i have decided to follow jesus we will not turn back we will not return even when challenges come even when tribulations come even when things will or things will devour me or things will entice me my decision is to stand with god and worship my god almighty shall we sing it together this morning shall we bless the name of our god shall we make a commitment this morning i will follow my jesus regardless what i go through glory to the lamb i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus no turning back
together. Bhaktakar 